Was this necessarily a good book? No, but I had so much fun reading it. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my May wrap up for 2024 part 2. I read a total of 33 books this month so I am going to be splitting it up into three different parts. If you're interested in the first 11 books that I read for the month I'll leave the link down below and you guys can check that out if you want but without further ado let us get started. The first book that I'm going to be talking about is Chosen. This is by Kirsten White. This is the second book in the Slayer duology and I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. I read Slayer years ago and I will admit that going into this book I had forgotten pretty much everything that happened in that first book but Chosen picks up right where Slayer left off and we are given a bit of a recap because Nina the main character references a lot of the events that happened in the first book. I felt like this was very slow. I honestly didn't really care all that much about what was happening to these characters or what they were facing. I will say that I did enjoy the final battle and I think that that was a fun aspect to the story but other than that I was kind of bored so I gave it a three out of five stars. Next up I have Promise Boys by Nick Brooks and I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. This follows three teenage boys of color who are under investigation after the murder of their high school principal. I had a lot of fun with this book. I listened to it on audio and followed along while reading and it is a full cast audio which I think very much enhanced the story for me. We get the three boys point of view but we also get multiple other people's point of views. I'm a sucker for a book with mixed media so I thought that the transcripts and the newspaper articles were very interesting. I was so invested with trying to figure out who the murderer was and every chapter left you off with more questions. I think that all three of the boys, JB, Trey, and Ramon were all very unique and fleshed out very well. I do think that the ending was a little bit rushed but I do think that the story wrapped up very nicely so I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is Into White by Randy Pink and I give this a 1 out of 5 stars. This follows Latoya Williams who is a black teen attending high school with her brother Alex in Alabama. She is tired of being picked on for her skin color so one day she prays to Jesus and the next day she wakes up and she is now white and it's kind of the story following that. I honestly don't even know where to start with this book. I think that the writing style was very juvenile and I think that it very easily could have been a middle grade novel if one of the scenes at the end was taken out. This could have been an amazing book. I do think that the concept is very interesting and we could have gotten a lot more from it if it had been executed differently. I thought by the end of this book we were going to have a deeper meaning to do with beauty standards and race and stereotypes but it did nothing of the sort. I just personally think that every single one of these characters was very one-dimensional. They were nothing but their skin color and they didn't really have a personality aside from that. The whole book just kind of perpetuated all the stereotypes and reinforced those stereotypes so I just was not a fan of this. I give it a 1 out of 5 stars. Next up I have Songs from the Deep by Kelly Powell and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows Moira Alexander who has always been fascinated by the sirens that lounge by the sea of her little small town. One day a young boy named Connor washes up on the beach and it is said that he was killed by the sirens but Moira is convinced that this is not the case and that he was actually murdered. Moira teams up with Jude who is the keeper of the lighthouse in order to figure out who the real killer is. I think that this book was very slow. I was a little bit disappointed in the lack of sirens that were actually in this book. I thought that we were going to get a lot more but we only got brief mentions of them. I also wasn't the biggest fan of Moira. She just rubbed me in the wrong way for some reason. I think that the book would have benefited a lot if we had also gotten Jude's point of view as well as Moira's. I just think that he was kind of the sunshine to her grump and that would have been a nice dynamic to play on. Personally, I didn't really think that the romance was necessary. I think that we could have gotten the same story with a platonic relationship and it would have been a little bit more effective. I did enjoy the writing style and I do think that the atmosphere was very on point for the vibes of this story. The ending left me a little bit puzzled though and I was left a little bit unsatisfied so I did give it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next I read The Good Luck Girls by Charlotte Nicole Davis and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows five girls who are all part of a welcome house in Arqueta. 
after one of them accidentally murders a man during business hours, they go on the run. In order to rid themselves of the favors that they have, which are magical tattoos that brand them as good luck girls, they must find Lady Ghost, and it's kind of the journey of them trying to find her. I listened to this on audiobook all in one sitting, and I really enjoyed the story. I was so invested right from the first chapter. I personally love a good revenge story, so throw in a girl gang who go on heists, and I was absolutely sold. I think that the found family aspect of this was my favorite part of the story. I think that the relationships between Clementine, Pansy, Mallow, Violet, and Aster were all just so complex and well done. I also really loved Z, who is the range man that joins and guides them on their journey. I thought he was a very compelling character, and I really loved learning more about him as the story progressed. I was also a big fan of the budding relationship between two of the girls. I'm really hoping that in the second book that is explored more. I do wish that there were other point of views other than just Aster's. I think that if we had heard from some of the other girls or even Z that the story would have been enhanced for me a little bit. I am definitely intrigued to pick up the second book and I will be on the hunt for it but I don't own it which is very sad but I really enjoyed this four out of five stars. The next book that I have is The Beholder by Anna Bright. This is another one that I gave four out of five stars. This follows Sayla who is the only daughter of the leader of Potomac and she knows that her sole duty is to find a suitable match. After a very public rejection from her closest friend, her stepmother sends her across the Atlantic to try to secure a match that will benefit her people. Was this necessarily a good book? No, but I had so much fun reading it. It was such a roller coaster of emotions, and I honestly had whiplash while I was reading it. The beginning of the book, when the rejection happens, is quite slow, but once Sayla boards the boat and is across the Atlantic, it picks up pace and becomes so entertaining. There is a ridiculous amount of insta love in this, which is not usually my thing, but once I kind of realized that that was Sayla's, like, thing, if you will. It became a very silly goose time, and I had so much fun. She was so naive, and she fell so quickly for literally anybody who gave her attention, which, like, honestly, me. But I honestly loved that she admitted to herself every time that that had happened that it was a stupid thing to do. I actually really liked both of the suitors in this, and I honestly don't even know which one I'm leaning more towards. I had so much fun in both of the kingdoms. There were so many twists and turns in this that I really did not see coming, so I am intrigued to pick up the second book. Again, I don't own it, so I really do need to get my hands on it, but I am definitely invested to see where it ends up. Next up, we have Love, Hate, and Other Filters by Samira Ahmed, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Maya Aziz, who is a 17-year-old Indian Muslim American who lives in Chicago. She has been spending a lot of time with her crush Phil who is starting to notice her. Her dream is to go to film school in New York City but her parents want her to stay closer to home and marry an older Muslim boy that they've picked out for her. Then a horrific act of terrorism occurs and the community that she's grown up with starts to turn on her because of her race and is kind of the story of that. This is both fluffy and heartbreaking at the same time. It is a book that focuses very heavily on racism, and Islamophobia. I think that it explores stereotypes and dismantles them in a very powerful way. I liked that Maya was very passionate about her hobby of making videos and that she was working towards the goal of going to film school. I will say that I was not the biggest fan of the love triangle, so I am very happy that that kind of fizzled out pretty quickly. I really liked Kareem. I think that his friendship with Maya was amazing, and I really loved their banter together. I think that that was probably my favorite part of the story. I liked Phil for the most part, but I will say that I was not the biggest fan of him at the beginning because he is in a relationship with somebody else, and and also flirting with Maya at the same time, so it kind of gave me the ick a little bit. I also was not the biggest fan of the ending. I do understand why it happened with the characters going off to college, but I honestly kind of would have preferred if the epilogue was just left out completely, but it was a good read. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read Havenfall. This is by Sarah Holland, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows 16-year-old Madeline, who spends every summer in Havenfall with her uncle, who is the innkeeper. He keeps the peace between four magical realms, Earth being one of them. She hopes to eventually inherit the role when Marcus is ready to step down, but her time comes a little bit early when a doorway that has been locked for years is suddenly opened and a monster emerges, injuring Marcus and leaving him unconscious and unable to perform his duties. 
I think that the world building in this was very well done. I wanted to know so much about these realms. I will say that the story was a little bit predictable and a lot of it I was able to call. There were a couple twists that I didn't see coming which I enjoyed but for the majority of the twists it was kind of obvious that they were coming. I was very intrigued about who opened the door and the motives behind opening it. I was able to guess who it was but that didn't hinder my enjoyment at all. I wasn't the biggest fan of Maddie. I think that she was very bland and boring. I was kind of more focused on the side characters and wish that the story actually followed Taya and Brecken instead, which sounds kind of bad, but they were much more interesting. I also really liked that Maddie was bisexual and part of a love triangle, but it wasn't the main focus of the story. I would be interested in picking up the second book in this duology, but I wouldn't say that I would go out of my way to find a copy, but it was a lot of fun. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is The Girl of Ink and Stars. This is by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Isabella Rios, who is a 13-year-old living on the island of Joya. She is the daughter of a cartographer, and she wants nothing more than to explore, but the law forbids her to travel beyond the forest. When her friend goes missing, she disguises herself as a boy and teams up with a bunch of explorers to go and find her. Although it was a very quick read, I thought that it was so slow in the beginning, which made it very hard to become invested in these characters and the story as a whole. I just didn't feel particularly connected to any of these characters. I didn't care what was happening to them on their journey. I didn't care if they were in danger. I think that the world building was a little bit lacking, but I did really enjoy the journey and the monsters that the explorers had to face in order to find Lupe. I did really enjoy the heavy focus on friendship in this and I do think that Lupe and Isabella were very cute. I also really loved the illustrations in the chapters and all the pages. Like there's a little fish monster up there and there's like a compass down there. Every single page has a different illustration on it which I think was a lot of fun. There's a little sailboat there. There's also a bunch of maps in it as well which are very cool and it's all the places that the explorers are traveling to. Next up I have Secret So Deep by Ginny Myers Sane and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. 12 years ago Avril's mother drowned at Whisper Cove Theater. It was deemed an accident but Avril has always suspected that something else may have happened. She decides to return to participate in the theater camp that is run by her mother's best friend Willa and she hopes to unravel the mystery about her mother's death. This started off very slow and didn't really pick up pace as the story progressed. The setting of the theater camp was very interesting and I do think that the mystery was intriguing enough to continue reading. I liked how everybody seemed to be a suspect at one point or another and I did really love the fog and I think that that whole aspect of the story was very intriguing and I wanted to know more about that. I was a little bit concerned about how none of the adults seemed to really worry about Avril. She kept like sleepwalking or passing out or just like not being able to focus on anything and none of the adults really cared. I do think that the book could have been shorter. It's like 400 and something pages and it did become a little bit repetitive by the end so I think if they had chopped a little bit of it we would have still gotten the same story. I also didn't really care about the romance between Willa's son Cole and Avril. It was very insta-lovey and I just wasn't vibing with it. I would have preferred there to to be more of a focus on the paranormal aspect of the story. I did like the friendship though, especially between Lex and Avril. I think if that had been more of the focus uh, rather than the romance, I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. Overall, it was a fun read. I do think that it would be the perfect like spooky autumnal read for the fog alone, but I did enjoy it, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. Okay, the last book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Grayling Song. This is by Karen Cushman and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. When Grayling's mother starts turning into a tree, she sends her on a quest in order to find her grimoire, which contains multiple spells and charms that may help break the curse. Along the way, she teams up with multiple magical users, as well as an accidental shape-shifting mouse named Pook. This was a really fun middle grade book. I could not get enough of the sidekick Pook. I wish that we had an entire series about Pook. He was so cute. I really disliked Grayling's mom. I personally would have just left her as a tree because she was kind of a meanie head. I did really like 
Grayling's character development. I think that she was very meek and mild at the beginning, but as the story progressed, she becomes more confident and sure of herself, which I really love seeing. There were quite a few very cute moments between Grayling and the other magic users that did make me giggle a little bit, and I do think that the target audience would really enjoy this, but I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the next 11 books that I read for the month of May to total 22. I did read a total of 33 books this month, so if you are interested in the first 11 or the last 11 books that I read, then I will leave the links down below and you guys can check them out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!